Hey YouTubers, it's Eli the OBD Tech. I'm here once again working on this PT Cruiser. You guys are probably thinking, uh oh, came back with the same problem. Well, let me tell you, it didn't. I'm currently using my launch C Resetter 2 scan tool, which I bought probably like five or six years ago from Amazon. I don't, you know, I don't really use it for my diagnosis videos, but for this video, I'm gonna use it just to check our code and our freeze frame data. So it's showing that, that our mill status is on. DTC stored in the computer, about one. So this is a culprit problem, guys. It's a P0456. It's an EVAP emission system leak detected. Very small leak. This is a very common problem on Dodge, Chrysler, and Jeep vehicles. I'm going to show you guys the uh, freeze frame data. Show you if it happened under load or at idle. So DTC stored is P0456 fuel system status closed loop. Engine coolant temperature uh, engine coolant temperature uh, range was at 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Short term fuel trim was a negative 8.6. Long term was a negative 0.8. RPMs was at 11.94, which shows it was it happened during at idle, zero miles per hour. Our evap perch command shows 0.0, .0. so it shows that the computer was not commanding the evap to turn on. And it happened at 10 seconds once the engine got started. Our outside temperature was at 66 degrees. So this happened during a cold startup, uh, perhaps in the morning. Let me go back and show you guys a red flag, which tells me that perhaps this problem is going to end up being a evap perch solenoid. which is basically on the short-term fuel trim value was at negative 8.6. Just for the fact that the, our short-term was at negative 8.6, that probably tells me that the problem is going to be the EVAP. It's probably uh, allowing fuel vapor to actually seep through the valve seal on the EVAP purge valve. So in other words, it's uh, that small leak is actually due to the fact that the EVAP is probably leaking and that's why you know we have the negative fuel trims so that extra fuel vapor inside the intake manifold which is causing this uh, rich signal all right so the most common problems on this p0456 code on these jeep chrysler dodge vehicles it's either a faulty fuel cap which is uh, probably the gasket on the fuel cap or a faulty evap perch solenoid that's uh, leaking past the valve and maybe a third component could uh, probably be the uh, natural vacuum leak detector but the two most common problems is either the fuel cap or the uh, evap perch valve so I'm going to show you guys the circuit diagram for this uh, system and then I'm going to do some visual inspections and then perform a fuel cap pressure test by using my, my Wicon EVAP test for the uh, fuel caps. And then I'll probably end up doing some voltage checks and functional tests by using my Autoboss and using some bi-directional control to test the EVAP perch valve. All right, guys. All right, guys, so for this uh, fuel cap diagnosis, I'll be using my OBD2 EVAP Leak Master Test Kit, part number 46568. It's a Wicon Hickok brand. Out of this test kit, I'll be using my 
actually the the OBD2 fuel cap tester model 45950 so pretty much you know, the way it works is that you pretty much select the, uh, the, the fuel adapter cap so for the Chrysler it's going to be this brown one here so each color is for you know uh, uh, for different uh, vehicles but the most common one is actually the black one but for the Chrysler's you know I'll be using the brown one FPT 25-8 so the way it works is that you, you pretty much attach this adapter into the uh, into the tester once you do that you press on the uh, press to start it's gonna go through a little run cycle so once it tells you that it's ready on the LED light which which is gonna give you like a red light to tell you that it's ready to pump so you pretty much pump it so you pump it until the indicator where it tells you stop pumping lights up and you stop then it's gonna run through its cycle which is testing the fuel cap to see if it could hold pressure and it's basically gonna give you three re test results either a pass an OBD2 fail or an IM fail all right, so this is the way this test kit works with the fuel cap tester. I'm gonna show you guys the uh, fuel, uh, the visual inspection of the fuel cap. So this is where it lives. Pretty much look at the uh, fuel, uh, the filler neck first to see if there's any rust or any damage there. It looks good. And I look at the fuel cap to see if uh, the gasket is either cracked or uh, shows any signs of uh, of damage to it, of it being also brittle. It still looks feels good. It doesn't really feel brittle yet. All right, guys. So the next step is to actually perform this test on this fuel cap to see if it actually it's holding pressure all right so let me set up then I'll show you guys all right so I'm ready to perform this uh, fuel cap pressure test I'm gonna turn the unit on so it turned red so it's ready to test so I'm gonna pump it now until it tells me to stop so stop pump indicator came on so I'm gonna wait about 10 seconds So it test results, it passed. I usually like to perform this about three times just to be 100% sure that the fuel cap is really good. So that's the first test I'm, that I did. I'm gonna perform one, uh, two more times. It's ready. I'm gonna pump it. Indicator came on to stop pumping. So about 10 seconds. All right, so it showed us a passing result once again. So that's two out of two. So I'm gonna do it one more time. I'm gonna turn the unit on again. ready I'm sorry for the background noise neighbors all right indicator came on to stop pumping it's gonna run the test on the fuel cap so so far two out of two let's make a third a charm All right, so three out of three so far show that it passed so that tells us that the fuel cap is good and the problem is not the fuel cap all right guys all right guys so i'm going to show you guys the uh, p0456 evap purge system small leak circuit diagram for this vehicle 
as you can see here there's two circuits on this diagram I'm going to focus more on the evac per solenoid for now since we're actually attacking the per solenoid for perhaps the cause of this small leak and if we get to the point where we have to maybe diagnose the natural vacuum leak detector then I'll go more in depth on that system so for now it's a purge so for our white with tan that's our evap purge solenoid control wire that's the voltage source that's, that the computer provides to the solenoid so it basically pretty much control, controls the, the output and then our evap purge return it's a dark blue with brown so pretty much this circuit the computer controls the computer controls the current to basically control how much the valve opens on the per solenoid remember this is a proportional evap per solenoid where it's gonna the current is gonna vary on, on how much the computer wants it to open to purge vape, uh, gas vapors into the intake uh, manifold so this is a uh, parasite switch circuit where if you test uh, both wires with the Keon engine off both, both wires should read approximately zero volts if you guys want to learn more about parasite switch or ground side switch you know check out Scanner Danner's channel you know that guy's amazing uh, to me you know, he's my teacher with all this uh, um, testing uh, techniques and methods that he performs so so I pretty much use uh, you know some of his uh, test methods on my videos and I also did a video on a Dodge Ram which I also did a diagnosis on a P04, P0440 and a P0456 and I performed um, pretty much uh, the voltage checks I used the a vacuum pump on that so for this one I will also be using a, a vacuum pump I may or may not use a voltmeter to check the the voltage on both wires so pretty much depending on the results of the uh, vacuum test you know when I perform on this solenoid it depends it's gonna depend whether I, I, I do the voltage checks but if you guys want to learn how to do it you know check out my video in which I perform these techniques or testing on, on a Dodge Ram. All right, guys. So let me set up and then show you guys. All right, guys. So in order to get to the uh, evap purge solenoid, you must remove the uh, the air filter housing. The upper part, you know, I just you just lift up and make sure to, you know hold it with something. I use the uh, the washer hose here to hold it, and you have to remove this one here. And you must remove the tip pumps bracket by removing these two bolts they're 10 millimeters all right guys so after removing the uh, bracket for the tip pump that's where the uh, personal noise lives it just lives just beneath the uh, brake master cylinder also beneath the uh, brake booster So pretty much there's two uh, two hoses attached to it, which are below the connector. So I'm gonna you know set up the uh, set up the vacuum pump and then perform this uh, this vacuum on this uh, person to see if it if it if it actually holds vacuum or not. And to perform this test, you must connect your vacuum pump to the can hose to apply this vacuum which is pretty much the bottom hose on this perch solenoid all right so let me set up and i'll show you all right guys so after struggling to remove those two hoses that attach to the perch solenoid as you can see here there's two ports the top and bottom the bottom one's usually your can uh, usually it's actually written on the port there it has the letter c a n I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up. So that's where you want to hook up your, your, you know, your vacuum gauge. 
All right, so back to the, those two hoses. You know, like I said, just be careful. It's gonna be a tight fit. And like I said, you know, there's a potential chance that, you know, when removing the uh, those two hoses, the plastic hoses could actually crack and break. So make sure to keep your, your pure solenoid on the bracket, which is right here. You know, where my finger's pointing keep it there when removing those you know these two hoses here it makes it much easier you know I use the a flathead screwdriver to you know to pry out those uh, those two hoses there to the personal noid all right so the next step now since I already have my my vacuum gauge already set up to the personal noid I'm gonna pump about 10 inches of vacuum And, th and this vacuum should hold 15 seconds or more. If it doesn't, it means that the problem is gonna lie within the personal noise. So here we go. I'm gonna apply about 10 inches. So I'm at 10 inches and slowly the vacuum is dropping. So that tells us that our problem is gonna be the personal noise. It, you know, like I said before, you know, this is a problem, a common problem on these vehicles, on the Jeeps, Chryslers, and Dodge, that these eventually give out and create a, a leak, a small leak in the system. So I'm gonna pump it one more time. Ten inches, slowly is dropping. Make sure to also check your, your your fittings to make sure that they're actually sealing that port there, that there's no leak that's causing this uh, gauge to actually fall. So I'm gonna check mine real quick. Sure, there's a tight fit there. I'm gonna pump one more time. So it's the third time, and it's still the same symptom. Gauge is slowly dropping. So this vehicle does need a perch solenoid. I'm gonna see if I could get one, a new one, and replace it, and then, and then perform this test once again. All right, guys. All right, so before I go ahead and replace this perch solenoid. I'm gonna do some bi-directional control by using my scan tool. I'm gonna perform this, you know, just to verify with you guys that the computer is controlling this perch solenoid that is providing the power in ground. This is a proportional perch solenoid where the computer pretty much controls how much current it provides to, to the solenoid to control how much uh, valve opening is gonna perch into the intake manifold with the fuel vapors. All right, so I'm gonna going to actuator test look for evap purge so this is with key on engine off engine must not be running to, to perform this test the actual purge current is showing about 1.96 milliamps I'm gonna hit start and let's hear for a click all right so I stop I'm not sure if the camera picked it up, so I'm gonna take it to the purge solenoid to see if it, to get a better sound. So here we go, I'm gonna hit start again. So that's the purge solenoid clicking. So that shows that uh, electronically it is good, but where it went bad is the mechanical part where it's not, the valve is not, it's no longer sealing properly and it's allowing vapors to seep into the intake manifold so that's the reason why we're having that negative 8.6 of fuel trims on our, in our short term all right guys so and another way to also perform this uh, test to check for circuit integrity is to actually disconnect your your connector from the per solenoid and then back probe your 
your control wire which was a white with tan and then connect a test light to pause uh, to negative post remember this is a power side switch so the computer provides the power and also and in this case it also controls the, uh, the ground so like I said disconnect the, the connector from the personal light connect your test light to battery negative and then with your scan tool do the back direction of control and then your test light sh should light up and that basically confirms that the computer basically from the connector to the computer there's no opens or shorts to ground so so the circuit integrity it's in good shape all right guys so i'm gonna go ahead and replace it and show you guys the the, the vacuum test once again all right so this is gonna be the final fix here uh, i got the uh, proof solenoid it's a girl ass brand part number pv302 this is the defective one so i'm gonna show you guys real quick i'm gonna connect the vacuum pump to the lower port here which is our can i'm gonna pump it So it's about 11 inches. Like I said, you know, this uh, vacuum should hold 15 seconds or more. So far, it is nice and steady there. It's at still at 11. So this pretty much, like I said, is, is the final fix. The problem was a faulty per solenoid valve that was leaking past the seal. I'm gonna release the vacuum. I'll pump it one more time. So 10 inches. It's holding. Nice and steady. Alright guys, so I'm gonna you know put this back in the vehicle and you know and consider this a fix. All right, guys. So this is Eli the Obedi Tech. Subscribe if you like. All right. So this is gonna be a bonus clip to this video. I'm gonna use a the test light method, which I mentioned earlier, to pretty much verify that the circuit integrity on the control wire, which is our white with tan, that the, the, it has no opens or shorts to ground from the connector all the way to the computer. So I'm gonna use a test light connected on the battery negative. Remember, you know, this is on a power side switch. Test light should be connected on battery negative. This touch positive. Test light lights up, which is good. It means that we have a good ground. So I'm going to perform a bi directional control with my scan tool. This test should be performed with the connector disconnected from the uh, per solenoid. And back probe the uh, white with tan wire. So I'm going to put my test light. On that back probe pin I'm gonna you know let it sit there and I'm gonna perform this back directional with my scan tool I'm gonna go into evap personoid all right so I'm gonna perform this test with the scan tool and then I'm gonna put the camera on the test light so when I perform this this test light should light up once I command the personal noise. You know, once I command the computer to turn on the personal noise. So here we go. So there you go. Test light is on. It went off. Do one more time. So that's pretty much you know how to confirm circuit integrity on the control wire from the connector all the way to the computer by using a test light. Alright guys.